थ्री टू वन यूर लाइफ Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first session of the Tinkerpreneur Bootcamp. I'm Varya, and on behalf of the ADL team, I'm really, really excited to uh, welcome all the students, mentors, and ADL in charges. Um, for the first session today, we have uh, Mr. Kiran Kumar with us. He's a regional mentor of change from the state of Bangalore, and you might have already seen him in a bunch of knowledge hub sessions. Today, he is here to introduce you to the boot camp and walk you through the first week of the boot camp. That's an introduction to digital skills. Um, so, welcome, sir, for today's session. Um, to get us started off, sir, why don't we start with the overview of the boot camp? I know some students saw it in yesterday's session, but I think it'll be great if we could go through that again. Yeah, certainly. Uh, thank you, Maria. Uh, certainly, we will do that. It will. Uh, provide an introduction to the bootcamp schedule on a week by week basis, and then we will take up the first week, um, which is basically on digital skilling. So we will uh, address this in two parts uh, in today's session. So let me just bring up my slides. Just give me a minute. Sure. Okay, I hope you're able to see the uh, slide deck now. Yes, yes, I am. Great, fantastic. So good morning, everyone. Uh, happy to be back again. Uh, my name is Imar. I'm a regional mentor of change. Um, I'm based in Bangalore, Karnataka. Uh, I'm here today to uh, give you a little more detailed um, insight into what this Tinkerpreneur Bootcamp is, how we are going to go about during the next nine weeks, what are the students going to learn on a week by week basis and how mentors can assist them uh, in the process. Uh, in addition to that, we will also talk about the digital skills, which is going to uh, be the first week's uh, agenda, so starting from 31st of May. Okay, so, so let me just start off by saying that uh, the Tinkerpreneur Bootcamp, just to reiterate a few points, this is the focus of this bootcamp is on importing not only digital skills, but also entrepreneurial skills to school students. Um, and this bootcamp runs for nine weeks from 31st of May to 1st of August 2021. And in the coming days, you will see um, YouTube live sessions probably on an almost daily basis uh, by mentors and others uh, who will be um, enriching you with a lot of knowledge. Uh, about various maybe tools, technologies, and things like these. And over the weekends, uh, we will have expert-led sessions who will be talking about the uh, the topic of that particular week. We will see what those topics in the next slide. Um, and uh, just to mention a few other things, uh, mentors will be creating WhatsApp groups, um, and they'll be adding all the students that are assigned to them, and students will be getting all the communication from AM to these WhatsApp groups. Uh, Varya, correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess this Absolutely is- Absolutely correct, yes. And there'll be an AIM volunteer supporting all of these WhatsApp groups as well. Yeah, fantastic, yes. So many of you have been wondering uh, with, uh, with uh, when you're going to uh, get an email from AM. Uh, predominantly, the communication mechanism will be through uh, WhatsApp, uh, because that's the quickest and the fastest way to reach out to all our students. 1,000 students, I guess, who have registered for this boot camp. Um, and WhatsApp is something that all of us check very frequently and it becomes a lot more easier. So uh, we suggest that all of you keep checking your WhatsApp on a daily basis uh, so that you get all the updates. Okay. So with that, we will get started with the uh, schedule of the boot camp. We will, um, I'll go through this in more detail, but I'll just give you a bird's eye view first. So in week one, which is starting from 31st of May, you're going to, first of all, acquire some digital skills. I'll tell you what those digital skills are as well in the next few slides. Okay, so this is the basics. Today, we need to learn about digital skills. Without digital skills, it's very difficult to um, do anything uh, because today we are living in digital economy and everything is becoming digital. And it's very important that we acquire 
some of these skills and some of you have already been acquiring some of these skills uh, in the ATL or maybe on your own. Um, but we are going to equip you with almost 22 digital skills as part of this bootcamp. Um, so very interesting ones. I will mention that in the next few slides. So we have from very easy skills to intermediate level skills to advanced level of skills. Uh, you get to acquire that over the next one week, starting from 31st. And then once you acquire those skills, what do you do with it? I mean, it's not enough if you just acquire skills and just keep quiet, right? We need to make use of it. So what we would encourage you in the second week to do is use some of those skills, one or more skills that you have acquired, and identify a problem that can be solved or addressed using these skills. And when you do that, when you bring the problem or when you bring a need and your skills together, you will be able to create something called as a digital product. Okay, so using digital skills in combination, I mean, and you apply it to a specific problem or a, you, uh, people's need, you can come out with a product. This product is which you can actually make it useful in the real world. You can use it and derive benefits from it. This is what we are going to do in week two. And in week three, you are going to refine and polish and enhance your product further. And after you build the product, is that enough? No, you need to know how to take it to the market, how to find customers, how to sell it. That is what you're going to create a plan of action. How, to, how do I do this? How do I sell it? Whom do I sell it? And things like that. This is what you're going to do as part of week four. You are going to create a business model. And in week five, you also learn how to promote your product among your customers through by creating digital marketing uh, materials. It could be like brochures, posters, and flyers, and things like these. This is what you're going to do as part of week five. And in week six, you need to start selling it. I mean, it's not enough if you just acquire skills, build a product, and then uh, you start marketing it. You also need to sell it. How do you sell it? You can set up an online store today. A lot of things can be uh, done through online. Um, I'm sure many of you are familiar with Amazon, Flipkart, Mintra, and many other sites where you can buy things online. So similarly, you're going to be creating your own online store where you can sell your digital products. And it's not enough if you just start selling because once you start selling, you'll start making money. And then you need to know how to manage money as well. So that's what you're going to learn as part of week seven. And then finally, when you have learned all these things, then you are ready to actually Begin your business, your online business, your part time or full time business while you're still studying. So, in week eight, you're going to start your online business as well. And then you'll also launch a marketing campaign. Once you announce your uh, business to the world, you need to run a campaign so that people become aware of what you are selling, what your products are. And then you also have to start pitching your product to customers or prospective customers or potential customers and start making a sale and you should start making money. That's the whole objective. So it's not just about acquiring some skills like many other training programs that you might have attended, either in ATL or somewhere else, but here you are going to go through the entire journey of becoming an entrepreneur. And at the end of this bootcamp, you should, be, you should have the competence to actually make money from selling your products that you have built using the digital skills you have acquired. That's the objective. Okay, now let's go into the details, each of these. Now I talked about skills, acquiring skills, digital skills. Okay, when we say digital skills, we mean anything that is like online. Um, I mean, skills in digital tools, digital te technologies. This is what we call as digital skills. Okay, and today, if you see anything, it, what is digital? Digital is basically that uses um, uh, uh, like in a binary numeric system. Okay, the bits of zeros and ones and things like that, which is the underlying concept behind any digital system. Okay, but now uh, we don't have to deal with bits and bytes, but we are going to uh, be doing a lot more, um, more interesting stuff. Um, so we have about 22 skills, as I mentioned earlier, and these are uh, categorized into easy, intermediate, and advanced levels. Uh, of course, what you see here is not necessarily organized in the same fashion. It's all uh, put together. Um, some of these skills are simple. Some of these are moderate in complexity. Some of them are a little more advanced. So you get a choice to pick whatever skills you want to acquire. Each skill may take you anywhere between as simple as like 15, 20 minutes to even 
maybe it may take you an hour or two depending on the kind of skills that you are going to acquire for example we have a very simple skill like a uh, quiz that you can create online uh, maybe using a simple tool like google forms or you can create a photo collage. These are very simple skills that you can acquire in just a matter of minutes. We are going to expose you to the tools that you can use to create them. Some of you may be already familiar with some of these, um, but you can also learn what more the tool offers you. Uh, you can also create a video story because if you want to tell your story, if you want to share your innovation story, your tinkering project, video becomes a very good mechanism. And once you have, let's say you have created some projects and prototypes and innovations you want to tell the world so you can create a website or maybe you can create a personal website as well or a hobby site or a website for your school you can create a mobile app which can do very interesting things maybe something for your own school you can uh, those of you who want to learn about computer programming you can learn about programming as well you can create something called as a qr code you must have uh, you have seen this uh, in many places in magazines on sometimes you even see it on TV you see it on billboards and many other places when you scan it with a, a phone it actually opens up some information so you're going to do some very interesting stuff with QR codes you can also compose your own music using artificial intelligence so we are bringing artificial intelligence technology in a very simple way practical way you learn something about augmented reality um, you learn about artificial intelligence with using which you can detect faces you can detect objects and you can create some very interesting applications out of it for those of you who are more into programming you have the option of learning python uh, you want to build drones there is a skill related to drones you want to uh, present your innovation or tinkering project in a very good way you you can learn about uh, presentation deck creating a good presentation deck if you are into space and astronomy and things like that, you can learn about rockets. How do Chandrayaan, Mangalyaan, um, how, how does ISRO launch rockets? How do they carry the payload which goes all the way to the moon or to the Mars? So many interesting things that you can learn. Or if you are more a literary person who would like to write stories or poems and things like that, you can create an ebook. Uh, if you want to, uh, you can also create a game. You can create Internet of Things applications which involves electronics, sensors, and actuators. You can create a robot. Uh, there are many skills. You can create 3D models uh, using very interesting tools. You can even create chatbots. Many of you have, I don't know how many of you have heard about chatbots. Chatbots are very interesting application, which are software using which you can actually communicate with uh, a machine or a software rather than chatting with another human being. And they can uh, answer back to any of your questions. So that's very interesting uh, uh, skill to acquire. Uh, you can learn about animation. Some of you must be very interested in creating animation and games. You can learn. You can also learn about machine learning, in which you can learn about how to uh, identify whether somebody is wearing a face mask or not in today's pandemic environment. So there are many skills like these. Okay. And now in week two, we are going to learn about uh, how to build, use these skills to build a digital product. So you have acquired one or more skills. Now you need to combine these skills. Let's say you have created a QR code and you can use that QR code to open your website. And inside your, your website, you can create your game or you can create your quiz. You can uh, probably put an augmented reality experience or you can put your chatbot or you can create a mobile app and that mobile app can be downloaded from your website. So you can start integrating your skills and make it put it all together in such a way that it actually serves a practical purpose or a need, maybe for your own need, for your uh, for, uh, for students in your school, or even for your teachers, you can create something interesting. Today, uh, because of pandemic, schooling has gone online. So it makes sense for you to create a very interesting product that uh, your teachers can actually start using it and they can start um, offering um, some of these products, I mean, they can use these products as part of their teaching, online teaching itself. They can bring lively experiences in the classroom using augmented reality technology, for example, or using artificial intelligence to take attendance of students who are in the classroom. So the very interesting things. So you could, for example, you could also create a, a travelogue ebook or a short story ebook that itself can be a product, or you can create a, um, a mobile app or um, a tool which will allow you to identify various tinkering resources in the ATL. It can tell you this is Arduino, this is a sensor, this is a 
rainwater sensor, this is a soil moisture sensor, this is a fire sensor, this is a 3D printer, I can tell you all of these. And you can also create a um, mask detector product, which will be very helpful uh, if people are not following, um, uh, you wearing masks when they go out, you can cast them easily. You can uh, create augmented reality and virtual reality based products. You can create um, another mobile app, which can, for example, um, use it as a timetable, or maybe it can give you, um, it, it tell you homework. The teacher can upload all the information and students can get all the homeworks on their mobile phones, or they can get the class timetable for the week. Or you can create a chatbot which will answer some of the frequently asked questions from parents and teachers. So there are many of these examples. I'm just quoting a few examples of how you could build products using the skills that that are being offered. But the imagination uh, is is all yours. How you imagine what kind of product you want to create is entirely yours. But this is a step you need to definitely take. You should not be satisfied with just acquiring some skills and leaving it there. You need to take it and apply it to a practical, useful, practical problem maybe that you're facing, your teacher face are facing, or your parents are facing, or you yourself are facing, uh, whether at home or in your school, and then you need to try to make some improvement there by solving that problem. This is a mindset change. It's a mind shift that has to happen. I see majority of students acquire skills, but then you need to also solve a problem with it, and then you need to build a product. And once you build the product, it's well, the first time you build a product, it will just be in the form of a prototype. Because you would have just built the bare bones, it's just essentials. But it's not enough to take it to the market to sell it or put it to practical use. So that is what you're going to do in week three. In week three, you're going to refine and polish your product. You're going to make it look good. You're going to improve the quality. If there are bugs in your software, you're going to fix it. Okay, you're going to enhance some of the features, make it more interesting for people to use it, for your teachers to use it. If it is just some uh, simple thing which doesn't have much features, people are not going to use it. So you need to make it feature rich, give them multiple capabilities, and you need to package your entire product in a nice way. It should not be just dangling here and there, like your prototypes in the ATL. It should be packaged well, it should look neat, and it should not just fall off, right? So that is what you need to do. If you don't do this, it's difficult to sell it. People will not accept it. Will you buy, for example, a car which in which the tire comes off after two, maybe driving for a kilometer or so, you would never buy the product, right? That's a car because it's dangerous. If the tire falls off, then I mean, you may end up in an accident. You would never want to buy that such kind of a product. So your product has to be good. It has to have good quality, isn't it? So things like that, you need to think in those directions. Will my customers use this product or not? Uh, what is missing in this? Oh. So, so this is where you move from building a prototype and start thinking of how people are going to use my product. And that is where you're going to improve this. So this, you get a specific week only to do this, okay, as part of week three. And then once you have built the product, refined it, polished it, enhanced it, you've packaged it, it's time to start thinking of taking it to the market. But can you rush into the market and say, this is my product, please buy it? No, you need to have a proper plan. You need to think through whom are you going to sell it. You can't say, I'll sell it to everybody. Not everybody would be interested in all the products. So you need to be very clear. First of all, you need to be very clear what your products or services are. You need to know who your customers are. We call this as customer segments. We also need to know how to sell it. What are the uh, sales channels? We call them as sales channels. We need to know how do we sell it? Should we? Should I sell it in an online store? Should I sell it on uh, Amazon or Flipkart? Should I sell it in a physical retail store? Do I need to rent a uh, physical store and go put my product there and sell it? No, for digital products, you don't need any of those physical stores. You can just sell it online. You just need an online store. And you also need to understand what is that benefit that the customer is going to get out of this or what we call as value proposition. You need to know why would customer buy it? What is the value addition that I'm bringing to my product? So that's what we call as value proposition. And you also need to figure out how do I engage my customers? Do I communicate them through email, through WhatsApp, or through Facebook or Instagram? Or will I pick up my phone and call them and tell them this is my product and this is, can you please buy it? So how are you going to do it? And what is your pricing? How do you price your product? What is your strategy for pricing? 
so will you offer at the same price to all your customers or maybe for maybe your uh, uh, somebody who's buying in bulk you may want to give some offer some discounts but for somebody who's buying in uh, retail then you may want to offer it at a higher price so you might want to have different pricing for different kind of customers you need to understand these things so that's what you're going to create as part of the business model and finally you're also going to learn how to make money what are the different ways to make money how will you sell and uh, how are you going to um, um, offer this to the customer so that they buy it and then maybe your product has different ways of making money you sell the product once but for any uh, value additions that you give over and above your product maybe some service that you give you can charge extra you can charge them on a monthly basis or on a yearly basis or you can just sell them all at once at one fixed price there are different ways to sell your product and make money from it so you need to think of revenue models and things like this so this is what we are going to create we're going to this is called as a business model canvas which is actually a simplified version of business model canvas this is what we are going to do in week four and in week five you're going to start marketing your product. What is marketing? It's about promoting your products to the customers. Uh, you don't yet have a customer, so you're going to start targeting your product at specific customers, specific groups of customers, maybe urban customers, rural customers, uh, males, females, children, boys, girls, senior citizens. So like this, you need to segment your customers, and then you need to start uh, promoting your products for that particular segment. So the way you're going to sell it to a senior citizen will be very different from how you're going to sell it to a, a small kid or um, how you're going to sell it to uh, an urban person uh, versus say, somebody in the rural areas may be very different. So you need to plan it properly. You need to have your own marketing strategy. That is what we do as part of marketing. And when we want to, today digital marketing is the in thing. That means we are going to use, make use of social media. We are going to make use of email. They're going to use, make use of all sorts of online mechanisms, digital mechanisms to promote our products. You would have seen lots of ads coming on your emails, on your Facebooks, on um, many other uh, mediums. So all these ads uh, are different ways of marketing it. So you could, you could be, and in addition to that, you also need to think about how are you going to brand your product or your business? So you need to start thinking along those lines. So you will be asked to come up with a brand logo a brand name, a tagline, a marketing tagline, and things like this. So you're going to become conscious of how my product will be perceived and what is the name I should give to my product or to my business. So that's what you're going to do as part of marketing because marketing is all about convincing customers ultimately to buy your product. So this is what you're going to learn as part of week five. And in week six, you're going to start, you need to start selling it. How do you sell it? Like for example, if it is a physical product, you may have to put a physical store where you have you can sell it. But for digital products, it becomes very easy. You can just start selling it online. Maybe you can go and just sell it on Amazon or Flipkart, or you can even start your own online store. And on your own online store, you can actually uh, put your brand name, your logo, everything, and then you can put all, put all your products there. You can assign a price. And when somebody goes to your uh, online store and they can see all the products that are listed there, they can click on any particular product and they can see the price and they can see the product details and they can see any offers or discounts that you're giving and they can click on the buy button. And when they click on the buy button, it will take them to a shopping cart and where the product will be there. It'll ask them for their um, uh, shipping email ID or address, whatever. Uh, depending on how you are going to ship it, an email ID should be more than enough for more many of the digital products. And then you ask them to make a payment through, uh, so let's say, credit card, debit card, whatever. And then you accept the payment. Once the payment is received by you, you actually ship the product through an email. For example, that's it. This is how you are going to set up and run your online store and sell all your online uh, digital products through the online store. And finally, in week seven, you're going to learn about a, base, a few basic things about finance or accounting and things like that. You're going to learn about um, some of the basic terms like what is revenue, what is expense. You'll learn about some of the um, um, uh, accounting statements like income statement or a profit and loss statement. You'll also learn about cash flow statement, what is a balance sheet in a very simple way. 
okay it's very very simple you learn about what is a purchase order what is an invoice what is a receipt you need to know some basic things because when you start your own business unless you are familiar with these some of these uh, terms it becomes difficult to communicate with customers somebody may say um, please give me a receipt or I, I have sent you a purchase order then you should know what a purchase order is so we are going to expose you to some of these basic things very simple ones no complication no complicated stuff here okay so you also need to know how to manage your money like money when you sell a product you have to earn some money but when you um, spend some money on buying some stuff or maybe some buying some raw materials or some uh, software licenses for your product or you make some phone calls you are going to actually spend money right so you need to keep track of your both your income as well as your expenses so at the end of the day at the end of the year you should know how much money you have made or whether you have lost money whether you are profitable or under loss so you need to learn these things and finally in week 8 you are going to start your own online business so you are going to tell the world that my online store is open and you are going to launch a marketing campaign maybe you can do a campaign through a social media facebook instagram twitter whatever email whatsapp you can create uh, this social media posters like how i've shown you here the one in the blue color here and you can send it on all these channels or you can create your own website where you put in a lot of information and maybe you can put a qr code there and then when somebody scans the qr code okay, boom it comes to your website and it shows all the information about your product so customers are enticed to buy your product you can also create merchandise if you want to there are tools for that as well and you can um, print your product logo name and things like that on a t-shirt or on a coffee mug and then you can give it away for free to uh, customers so these are some of the um, other things that you can do as part of a marketing campaign and finally in the last week you're going to learn how to pitch your product to potential customers and make a sale this is an art selling is an art you need to know how to convince somebody in a short period of time otherwise nobody um, will buy your product so this is what you're going to learn as part of the ninth and final week okay so i hope it has addressed most of your questions on what we are going to cover as part of this boot camp even though it's nine weeks long it's very interesting very exciting we have done some of these similar boot camps in the past and i've seen a lot of students really jumping with joy when they start coming towards uh, the ninth week because they have been exposed to many things that uh, they were completely unaware of and now they see that their competence and their capability their confidence has gone up so much that they think that now i can start my own business and in fact some of our students have actually started their own online business they set up their own online store so it's amazing that you will see a complete turn around in how you perceive and how you um, want to take your ideas forward it's no more about just building prototype and throwing it away you had to go through the entire journey okay this is what i wanted to share with you as part of my first session so we i think we are halfway through the session 11:30 close to 11:30 already uh, uh varya do you have anything else to add uh, to what i shared before we go to the digital skills part of it no sir i think it looks great just for the students and the mentors present if you have any questions um now on us you can put them in the chat i'll keep a note and towards the end kiran sir will be answering those yeah now i will yeah please go ahead and ask your questions uh, on the chat window and during the next uh, 20 30 minutes i will run you through the um the importance of acquiring digital skills so if you remember the week 1 was all about acquiring digital skills because this is the fundamental this is the foundation upon which you're going to build your digital product you're going to uh, go to the market you're going to market it you're going to sell it for everything you need to have digital skills as the foundation so this is what we are going to address in uh, in the rest of this session today okay so i hope it was uh, very exciting to know what lies ahead in the next 9 weeks but let's start with the first week okay so first we need to understand what is the importance why we need to acquire digital skills yeah to some extent you have already understood but i will also give you the bigger picture of where the world is headed and what's happening around why you need to learn digital skills today whether you want to become a thinker entrepreneur whether you want to become an entrepreneur or not you still need to acquire digital skills it is required everywhere today 
Okay. Now let's start with what you already know. Most of you have uh, been to the ATL. You have done some tinkering. You have done some innovation. You have done some. Um, you have solved some problems. You have participated in the ATL marathon. Um, things like that. You have done many things. So ATLs are a great place to explore, experiment, tinker, discover, and innovate. Right. So I don't have to tell this to you. Many of you have been to the ATL. You already know this. And you get exposed to a lot of tools and technologies. You have get exposed to do-it-yourself tools and toolkits, and you have built prototypes. Uh, you it allows you to express yourself creatively, and you can bring out your innovative talents as well. So it's an amazing place, right? Now, if you see the kind of tools and resources that are available in the ATL, I'm sure many of you will agree with this. So you will find lots of electronic resources, for example, sensors, actuators, Arduino boards, microcontroller boards, uh, using which you can build various electronic stuff. You also have 3D printers in many of the ATLs. You have lots of uh, hand tools like screwdrivers, cutting players, hammers, uh, hacksaw blades, drilling machines, lots of them I find in the ATLs. You also get to do soldering. So some of you must have already used the soldering tool we call it a soldering gun using which you can connect um, uh, wires, uh, connect electronic components to something called as a printed circuit boards, things like that. You also have many other non-electronic prototyping resource materials, like it could be um, a, a simple things like cardboard sheets or pivicals or sketch pens and glue tapes, um, lo whatnot, lots of stuff that use using which you can actually put together a prototype. Right, so you find those kind of things. In addition, you uh, many of you must have seen drone kits and robotic kits and in, uh, Internet of Things kits. So lots of these kits, DIY kits, are available in your ATL. There are also computers, mobile devices, televisions, lots of lots and lots of resources. You have already got used to many of these things. You have uh, been exposed to electrical, mechanical, electronic, and digital tools and technologies, isn't it? Um, so you, you already know quite a bit. It's not that you don't know uh, things. I mean, this is not something new. I mean, last few years you have been already acquiring this. Even if you are not a, a, a been to the ATL, don't worry because uh, this bootcamp doesn't necessarily need you to be familiar with the ATLs. I mean, uh, being, uh, being you don't have to necessarily have to be uh, gone to the ATL or tinkered or anything. You can still start doing it now because we are going to start uh, expose you to digital tools and digital technologies. In fact, digital tools and technologies are the ones which have been creating the most profound impact in our lives in recent times. You are familiar with mobile apps, whether it is your Gmail or Facebook or uh, WhatsApp or many other Instagram or whatever. You have lots of apps. You want to book a cab, you have Uber, taxi, uh, Ola, and things like that. For everything, we have started using mobile apps, right? They're all digital uh, tools, basically. Or you can also call them as products. Uh, we are all familiar with websites and web applications. We use the internet like anything, right? It's communication mechanism. Social media, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, all of these. So we are already familiar with some of these, but there are also other things like Internet of Things. I'm not sure how many of you understand Internet of Things, but you get an exposure to it in this bootcamp. You can uh, get exposure to robotics as well. You can actually simulate a robot as part of this uh, bootcamp. Uh, either you can build a physical robot if you have the physical material and just simulate a robot. Uh, we have technologies like data analytics, artificial intelligence, which is becoming very, very, um, uh, mainstream and very popular and school students are even building artificial intelligence applications like detecting uh, whether somebody is wearing a face mask or not. It can even recognize your faces. Think of how you can actually build something useful once you know these technologies and tools. If you know that you can recognize faces, then you can maybe take attendance of students in your school. Isn't it? Fantastic. Chatbots and voice assistants are other technologies, uh, which I mentioned earlier, the chatbots, you can talk to a machine. Voice assistants like Alexa. Many of you are familiar with Alexa. You can just speak to an Alexa as if you're speaking to another human being. Isn't it amazing? And you can actually create skills with Alexa using which 
Alexa will respond to you the way you want to respond. Today, you can only ask some questions and Alexa gives what a response it wants to give. But uh, in the bootcamp, you could, I mean, you, you can even learn some of these skills. Virtual reality, augmented reality, these are other technologies which make it more visual in a virtual world. You can superimpose a virtual object onto a physical uh, environment that is called as uh, augmented reality. Or in virtual reality, you go completely, you wear some kind of goggles and you see everything in a virtual world. Big data, blockchain are some of the other technologies. Of course, we will not take you to all of these as part of this bootcamp, but some of them so that you get exposed to some of these emerging digital technologies. So you are more comfortable and com com comfortable to deal with these kind of things. So in today's digital economy, digital skills are a must to have. So when we say digital skills, it means digital, you need to be aware of digital technologies, like with some of the ones that I mentioned just now. And you also need to know how to use digital tools in order to create, let's say, a product, a digital product or any other product, for example. And you need to have basic literacy in digital technologies and tools and things like these. And most importantly, all of these combined, you can call them as digital skills, which is basically an uh, ability to understand and use digital tools, devices, applications, networks for creating, managing, and exchanging information. All of these online. So you need to know these terms technologies, digital technologies, digital tools, digital literacy and digital skills. Okay, this is where we are headed. The world is more and more into digital stuff because we are living in a digital economy today. Now, I'm sure all of you are familiar with many of these uh, digital products. Some of them have electronics, physical electronics. Some of them may be purely software based, but nevertheless, we can call all of them as digital because they use digital underlying digital concepts and digital technologies. Whether it is your smartphone or a tablet or WhatsApp or your Google Meet and Zoom or a Fitbit kind of device which will measure your uh, walking speed, distance, or things like that. Whether it is your Google Photos, whether it is your Facebook, Uber app, um, music applications or Netflix for movies, uh, online stores or marketplaces like Amazon, Flipkart, and things like that, whether it is an ebook, whether it's a music player like an iPod, whether it is some e governance applications, a smartwatch, or a thermostat like Nest, all of these are digital products. And digital technologies allows us to create these kind of digital products and services. So now, if you understand digital technologies, if you have uh, no digital tools, it becomes very easy for you also to create products and services like these. It will be amazing if you can come up with the next um, alternative to WhatsApp or next alternative to Facebook or maybe something completely new. Isn't it amazing? So now, <clears throat> if you see what's happening is because we are using these digital products and services extensively, it is transforming our lives like never before. I mean, our lives are completely changed. Uh, in fact, Today, there are lots of these BP monitors that you can actually, in the earlier days, you had to go to a doctor to measure blood pressure. But today, you can just buy these devices and where they have become very inexpensive. You can buy it and keep it at home and you can check your own BP or maybe even sugar levels and things like that. So they completely transformed the way we um, use these kind of devices. Earlier, we never used to use it ourselves. Only the doctors used to use it. Um, but now we can buy it and use it and check it on our own that becomes more flexible, convenient for us, right? And today there are robotic exoskeletons which have made it possible for even people who are disabled from the waist down, they are called as paraplegics. They can again get up and walk. People who are paralyzed were never able to walk ever. They always had to move around on wheelchairs or using crutches. But now with these robotic exoskeletons, which are really fancy technology, such kind of people can get up and walk on their own. And the third example is about 3D printed cars. Cars are being 3D printed. Earlier, that was not the case. The, the car manufacturer would come up with some standard design and he would manufacture thousands of cars. But now in the future, you will be able to say, I want my car in this particular design. You can design the car and say, this is the shape, this is the color, this is the 
uh, design and this is the number of seats I want and the manufacturer should, will be able to make a custom 3D printed card for you. And that's amazing technology. And Amazon Go is another very interesting um, uh, retail store in US uh, where you don't have to, uh, uh, once you buy the product in a retail store like a grocery store, you don't have to stand in a checkout queue and then wait for other people to clear before you get your chance to pay and then take your products out. In this store, you just walk in. As soon as you walk in, there are artificial intelligence technologies which will recognize your face and it will tell you, it will identify that, okay, this is the person. And when you walk into the store, you take some products from the shelf, put it in your shopping basket. It knows what products you have picked and put in your basket. And then when, and at the end of your shopping, you can just walk out of the store without paying. What the store does is it has technologies which will figure out, okay, these are the products that you have put in your cart. It automatically bills you and the money will be deducted from your debit card or credit card or your banking account. So that's how it works. It becomes very seamless. Your retail experience is completely transformed now. And now devices like Alexa and Google Homes, uh, these are voice assistant devices. So now we are able to communicate with machines as if we speak to another human being. So we are just using English. We are using Hindi to communicate with these kind of uh, machines. And we say, Alexa, play me a song, and it, is, uh, uh, it says, uh, plays your favorite song. Or you want some cricket score, it will tell you a cricket score. Or you can customize it in such a way that it gives you a custom answer to whatever your questions are. And virtual reality technology is being used in tourism sector extensively these days. You have virtual tourism. We don't have to physically go and go to some historical place halfway across the globe. Uh, with very inexpensive virtual reality technology, you can experience something like a Great Wall of China or Taj Mahal near uh, in Agra, Agra, or maybe something else, Machu Picchu in, uh, let's say, South America. Uh, anything that you want to experience, you can experience sitting in the comfort of your own home by just wearing a virtual reality uh, headset. That's how it has transformed. Every industry is, every uh, field is getting completely transformed by digital products and services. And now as we make progress, when artificial intelligence, robotics, internet of things are getting added to products, our products are becoming smarter and smarter. And these products are becoming so smart that they can adapt to our needs. They can understand who is using it. If I were using it, it behaves in one way. If my uh, son or daughter are using it, they, it behaves in a different way. They become adaptive and they also are becoming more cognitive, by which I mean it can uh, think almost like human beings. It can reason, it can use logic, it, it can figure out things on its own. Just look at the self driving cars that are coming into the market. Um, a car which can which doesn't need a driver, it can drive by itself. It, when it goes on the road, it has lots of sensors and devices and it can sense your road and if, if it knows when is the traffic signal, when I need to stop, if a pedestrian are crossing, it, it slows down the car, okay? And it again accelerates when the road is free. So it can do all by itself. You don't need human beings to do this. Of course, it also disrupts because it takes away the driver's job. Look at Sophia. Sophia is maybe, of some of you must be familiar. Sophia is something called as a humanoid robot. It can converse with human beings. You can have any kind of conversation. It responds to you intelligently as if it is another human being. And today artificial intelligence is also being used in diagnosing diseases by doctors and uh, uh, medical professionals. It can even do better diagnosis. Maybe doctors can go wrong, but sometimes, but these have become more and more accurate. And over a period of time, they can probably detect like th things like uh, tumors and cancers much better than any human beings can do. And there are Boston Dynamics logistical robots which can do very heavy duty job, very intelligently, which only a human could do earlier, like lifting and not only lifting, but also intelligently lifting it and putting it in the right places. It, they are being used in factories. And IBM Watson has something called as a legal advisor, which is a artificial intelligence based computer which can give you legal advice instead of going to a law lawyer in future you might be able to go to this IBM Watson and it can tell you whether you're going to win the case or they're going to lose your case in the court and things like that 
so it can give you legal advice for many of the uh, things which are legal uh, related and there are smart warehouse robots that are being used by amazon and other companies which can go to uh, shelves in different uh, warehouses and it can pick up the right materials that you need and put it in um, the right place um, or it can be shipped but, um, uh, to you when you place an order no human being goes and picks up your order it is all done by these robotic machines artificial intelligence based machines so in a way all this is leading us into something called as a second machine age the first machine age was probably a few uh, 200 300 years ago where the steam engine and things like that came where machines started doing some of the hard work that human beings could not do but in the second machine age that we are entering today machines are taking over the thinking jobs so it's both good and bad because it will relieve us of some of the um, um, you know, tough things, tough jobs that we need to do, especially when we are tired, but it can also take away some of our jobs. So the whole world is changing today because of these kind of technologies and the kind of jobs that you used to see earlier may become extinct and totally new kind of jobs may appear in the future. So it's very, very important that we adapt to this changing world. If we don't do it, if we don't understand these digital technologies and tools and we don't acquire the skills, we'll be left behind and it will be very difficult to um, um, uh, participate effectively in the future. So basically, it's important that all of us acquire digital skills and continue to acquire it because these knowledge and skills that we acquire will give us a strong foundation for our future. It will not only help us become familiar, with these uh, latest emer em and emerging digital technologies, but will also enable you to express creatively. Never before we could express ourselves so creatively earlier, but digital technologies has made it so so easy because with your phones and your computers and your laptops, you can create so many things. If you had to create something in the physical world, you need a lot of money to do it. And if, especially if you have to do trial and error and build some product, it costs you a lot of money. But with digital products, it's all in software. Everything can be done in software before you can actually build anything. And many of these digital products are just, I mean, can be built in using software and sold uh, through software. So no expense involved other than probably the cost of the tool. But fortunately, most of these tools are also free to use. So it becomes very, very easy. Okay. So the thing is you can, um, with, once you acquire these digital skills, you can also start off building products and start offering it to the customers and you can start making money and you can learn the ropes of entrepreneurship early in your life. So you, you have many benefits, okay? In this digital economy, you uh, reap the benefits of having these skills. And if you don't have it, it will be a huge disadvantage in the future because more and more everything is going digital today. Fortunately, uh, as I said earlier, we have lots of tools whether you want to build a product, whether you want to sell a product, whether you want to market your product, whether you want to learn something new, there is a tool for everything. There are cloud-based platforms and tools which makes it very easy to acquire skills, build products, market them, sell them, everything is available. And many of them are free. That's what you're going, going to get exposed to in this bootcamp as well. So you, get exposed, you will get exposed to many of these tools, some of which you may be familiar, but many other tools are not so familiar, so you will get exposed to it and your confidence will dramatically improve. And a whole world of opportunities, a whole world of possibilities will open up to you. Because of these tools, you can tinker, you can build prototypes, you can build products, you can build services, and you can start selling your digital products and services to paying customers while you're still studying. Maybe over the weekend you can work on them or during summer holidays you can create your products. When you are idling, you don't have anything else to do, but you can create. It'll creative juices will start flowing and you'll start feeling more enthusiastic, happy that you have created something. And all you need is just a computer and an internet connection. That's it. And you can start your own online business at, from home and be earning money. And so it's very easy. With digital skills, it becomes very easy to start your own digital venture. You don't have to go to the office. You don't have to uh, have your own office space. You don't have to have hire employees. You don't have to have a lot of money. You can be anywhere, work at your own pace, at your own schedule, work as little as as much as you want. Maybe you work only during your summer holidays or during your uh, Dasra holiday, whatever. 
some holidays or weekends and you can still build your product and you can grow and uh, make money and use this online tools and platforms to not only build but also host and uh, run your digital products completely online uh, i mean for free or maybe sometimes there'll be a small fee for it okay which you can buy on a monthly basis or on a yearly basis and you don't have to have any business skills not much of business skills are required you just need to know how to build your product and start selling it marketing experience everything can be taken care of if you were to start selling your products on amazon or flipkart they will take a lot of your marketing burden they will market your products as part of their own marketing campaign and you your products get promoted and you you will start getting orders and you start shipping them and you start making money so it's amazing journey uh, that um, we can all take so digital skilling is the first step so i encourage all of you uh, to take this first step but don't stop at uh, acquiring only digital skills build a product which addresses a need or a problem market it sell it make money i would like all of you to have made at least a few tens of rupees or a few hundred rupees by the end of this boot camp build something that is useful to somebody who is nearby around you your parents your family members your relatives your classmates your school your teachers your parents your school management sell it to them don't try to build some product which is like like some for somebody else which you may not be able to sell immediately so start building things for people who are near to you for whose problem you whose problem you understand well for which you can use your skills and technologies to build something useful and then sell it to them that's how you gain confidence but if you say i'm going to sell something i'm going to build a product for some military or for some farmer or somebody else and if you don't have direct access to them you will your product will just remain a prototype nothing more than that so to build confidence start with something which is near before you go too far okay so with that i'll conclude my um, um opening uh, session and if you have any questions we can take it now yeah thank you so much sir for the session i have made a note of a couple of questions that are there the first one is about students who are working in teams how should they be working together and for that i just like to say that uh, you should uh, together as a team decide what are the what is the digital product that you'd like to build what are the digital skills that you'd like to acquire over the next two weeks and then based on that you should go ahead if you want to learn skills that are not required for your product you're also completely free to do that so i think um, if you're working as a team the first step should be to speak to each other um, identify what you want to um, build through the course of this boot camp and then uh, you know uh, decide on a plan of action on how you want to go about it um, the next question we have is how many skills should I be learning? Should I be learning all the skills that are taught? Should I be learning a few skills or so? What would you say on that? Yeah, I would yeah. say uh, I'll leave it to the uh, individual students. Uh, at least you need to acquire one skill, but I would encourage you to acquire as many skills as possible. And I have seen that in the past boot camps where we have got students, uh, we encourage them to acquire one or two skills, but then they came back within a week and said, sir, I have acquired 15 skills, 18 skills. Okay, I, we were completely, uh, I mean, very surprised to hear that. Um, because many of these skills are very simple. What we have done is to give you very detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to acquire the skills. It's a bit of brief introduction to the skills itself on the website for which AM will share access to all the students and mentors and teachers. You will find that there are various skills which are been listed. There are 22 of them in all, and you can click on any of them and you can read up a small um, uh, introductory material. And then there are uh, some videos to watch and there are also some slide, uh, one or two slide decks. We just had to go through those slide decks, which give you step-by-step -step instructions for acquiring the skill. For example, if you were to acquire a um, uh, skill in how to build a uh, quiz, a very simple quiz, uh, you will find that in a slide deck, which will tell you, okay, go to this particular tool uh, with your web browser, 
And most of these tools, you don't need to install anything except a few of them. Most of it is completely browser browser based. So all you have to do is type the URL and it takes you on your web browser. It takes you to that particular tool. You need to create an account on that tool with your uh, many a times you can just log in with your Google uh, account itself. You don't need to create any other account. Just log in with your Google account and um, then access the tool and follow the step-by-step uh, -step instructions in the PowerPoint slide on the slide deck. It will tell you do this, do this, do this, step one, step two, step three, step four. It will give you steps, step-by-step -step instructions. And you just follow it and you acquire the skill. Maybe you will have some 20 slides, 30 slides to follow at the most, and then you would have acquired the skill. And once you acquire the skill, at the bottom of the page, you will find something called the Submit Assignment button. You click on that and a new page opens and you need to uh, submit lately information about the kind of skill that you have acquired and hit submit. That's it. And your submission is done. And there's also a quiz that you can take. A quiz will test your knowledge of how much you have learned about that uh, particular tool or about that particular skill or about that particular technology. So it is more useful for your own reference to know how much you have earned and how, what kind of uh, score you have got. So it will give you, it will further motivate you to acquire more skills. So in a day, I have seen students acquiring anywhere from five, five to eight skills very easily because some skills take only 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Some skills take you maybe an hour. Maybe some may take you a little more than that. Um, so use this time wisely because many of you still have your summer holidays. Um, use this time wisely. You will never regret it because these kind of Boot camps will never uh, don't come often, and when it comes, you have to grab such kind of opportunities and make use of the skills. And I'm I'll, I can assure you that you'll really love and enjoy what you're learning through this. And you will come back and tell us at the end of this boot camp that a whole new world has opened up for you. Okay, so yeah, so absolutely. Good luck and all the best. I see two more questions which I'll quickly address. So one is how do we get in touch with our mentors? You will, uh, details for that will be sent to you by Monday. So just hold on tightly then and you will have details for your mentors. And the same is for the portal as well. You'll get sign in access to that. So just keep an eye out on your mail and by Monday we'll get it. So sir, I think we're almost done for this session. Before we conclude, I just wanted to check, do you have any final advice for the students as they embark on this nine week journey? Anything that you'd like to say to them? Yeah, one message I would like to give is, please go through this entire journey of nine weeks. Okay, follow the curriculum step by step. Don't jump ahead, but go step by step. Acquire the skills. But most importantly, learn how to convert that skill into a full product. Okay, and then you learn how to polish it and how to market it, how to sell it. You need to acquire all the skills. Don't drop out anywhere in between because none of these assignments or skills are hard to uh, acquire. They're very easy to acquire because we have made it very simple with all the step by step instructions already provided. You don't have to do much. You just have to go through the steps and then you will be done. And um, it's still, I mean, even if your school has reopened or are about to reopen, it's still at the beginning of the academic year. So you don't have exam pressures, test pressures. So just make use of this time because later on, I'm sure you will get busy. But right now is a very good time. This is launched. This bootcamp has been launched at the most appropriate time when you are still in holidays. So we use this time wisely uh, and acquire the skills and build products. And at the end of this bootcamp, we want to see those products, not just skills alone. We want to see your products because in products, we know that, okay, the product is the proof of the pudding. Like we know that, okay, you have acquired the skills. You have learned that art of converting your skill into a product and you know how to sell it, how to market it and how to make money. So everything is in that product. Okay, at the end of this bootcamp, you should know how to pitch it, and um, um, maybe there'll be sessions. I don't know whether, whether the students can actually pitch and showcase their product to Atal Innovation Mission members. Uh, but if such an opportunity is available, uh, make use of it. Okay, because you learn very valuable lessons. So that's my message to you. 
Okay, thank yeah. you so much, sir. Um, thank you for your time and insights. And I'd also like to thank all the students, mentors, and teachers who joined us. You will be hearing more from us in the coming days. And I really look forward to having you all as a part of this learning adventure with Atal Innovation Mission. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.